Hey, what's up guys? It's Craig Phoenix back with another video today. Today is the 15th day of May Madness. I have an exciting video for you guys today. Today we're going to be learning my recipe for my fruit fly culture mix. If you don't know what May Madness is, I make a video every single day in May and every Sunday is a live stream. So I just had one of those yesterday. If you missed it, go check it out where I got reptiles here in Calgary, Alberta, and they had some wicked stuff. If you guys want to see material every single day in the month of May, then subscribe to my channel and you will not be disappointed. Now that I've got my little sales pitch out of the way, we can actually move on to the fruit fly culture making. First things first, I'm going to go through what you're going to need to make your fruit fly cultures. At a very basic level, you're going to need 32 ounce deli containers, or I've seen people do it with mason jars as well. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that, so I'm going to stick with what I know and say that you're gonna need a 32 ounce container and the mesh lids that you're seeing in front of you right now. The 32 ounce container allows plenty of space for the fruit fly cultures to boom and have a lot of fruit flies in there. And the mesh lid allows air to pass through with no larva or fruit flies being able to get out. The base of your fruit fly mix is gonna contain a couple different things. This is my recipe, and then I add some additives for extra nutrients in the end. But to make the containers that you see in front of you, I have one box of potato flakes, which is almost 400 grams. I have two cups of nutritional yeast, and then in the other one I have two cups of brewer's yeast. I have two cups of icing sugar, and then I have a couple tablespoons of cinnamon to make up the base. Now in this mix I also have some flaxseed. I just use maybe two cups, uh, one cup each container and that is the mix that I have. For added nutrients, I've ground up banana chips, which are ground into as fine a powder as I could get. It doesn't really need to be super fine. I also add smoked paprika, then there's beetroot powder. I also add spirulina. What other things are you going to need? You're going to need a mixing spoon, you're gonna need vinegar, you're gonna want coffee filters and or excelsior. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how I set up one of the five fruit fly cultures that I'm starting today. So what that's gonna consist of is a third cup of the nutritional yeast and uh, potato flakes, that mix. Then I want to add about a half tablespoon of the banana chips. I don't really know how much paprika I add on top, but I add maybe four or five taps. I don't know if that's gonna give a good accurate measurement, but that's what I use. Then the beetroot powder, I use about a half teaspoon. The spirulina, I add just a very light dusting, just so it's a little bit in there. They don't need a lot of spirulina in there. And then I mix it up. So the mixing process involves a quarter cup of vinegar. You can use apple cider vinegar or you can use white vinegar. Either one works. And then you're essentially just going to mix it. After you add the vinegar, what I do is then add the boiling water. Make sure it is boiling because that will activate the uh, the mashed potatoes, so you're not just gonna get like a weird soupy consistency. It will actually kind of fluff up to be more mashed potato-y. So while I'm mixing here, I'm just gonna go into a little bit of detail on why I add all this extra stuff. Now, this extra stuff that I add is all for nutrients. I'm into providing the best, most nutritious fruit flies for my frogs as I possibly can get which is why I have several different, like the banana chips and the beetroot powder. Those are all extremely rich in vitamins. Uh, the paprika is definitely for beta carotene. The cinnamon that you're adding in is actually an antifungal, anti-mold. Now the vinegar also helps with that, but the cinnamon is just kind of an extra cherry on top, I suppose. The spirulina adds a ton, a ton of nutrients. Of course, this is my choice for making fruit fly cultures. You by no means have to add all this extra stuff to have fruit flies for your animals. This is just me going above and beyond and adding as much possible healthy vitamins and minerals into the fruit flies, which my frogs will then consume. Now that we're done mixing, basically what I'm going to do is let these cool down to about room temperature. They don't need to be 100% room temperature. I'm gonna stop blabbering right now and let's move on to setting up the fruit fly cultures. Alrighty, and we're back. So you can see this is the cooled culture. There's still some condensation in here because uh, I mean, there's not a ton of air circulation, but you can see that is the consistency of the culture right there. You're gonna wanna make it look like very thick baby food. Now the next step is what I do as kind of a top dressing. I do a top dressing of the cinnamon as well as the bread yeast, bread machine yeast, because the cinnamon is again an antifungal and will prevent any mold or anything from growing on the surface. And then the yeast is actually food for the fruit flies. The little filter came off, but 
just going to do a light dusting of cinnamon. It doesn't need to be much. It's actually really hard to tell how much cinnamon is in there, but again, it's not enough to uh, make it significant by any means. The next step is you take a pinch of the bread machine yeast, just a straight pinch, and you just put that in there. I typically actually do about one and a half to two pinches. That's all the bread machine yeast that we're going to need. So you can put that off to the side and you'll get something that looks like that. Now that your culture is all finished, it's been seasoned, I guess you can call it, with the cinnamon and the bread machine yeast. Now what we're going to do is add the insides, essentially. So what I do is use two coffee filters per culture and then a small handful of Excelsior. Now you can use just Excelsior, you can use just the coffee filters, but it leads, uh, this stuff tends to fall down and go into the mold and then creates like a, a cake on the surface that doesn't allow the maggots through. And then this stuff is great, it's just kind of hard to come by in Calgary. So basically what I do is I just conserve what I have and I use the coffee filters as a replacement. So in order to use the coffee filters, you're not just going to keep them the way they are. Basically what you're going to do is fold them. You're going to fold them once. You're going to fold them over again. And then I pinch them at the bottom and twist a little bit to kind of make a spike almost. And then you'll get a flower. Flower. And then you can do it for your next one as well. And you'll get something like that. Now that just increased surface area. The maggots tend to be able to crawl up this a lot easier in order to morph. How I set up the culture is I put one in and then the second one in directly next to it. And then I kind of push it over. So then you have about half of it being the coffee filter and then the other half will be Excelsior. It's pretty self-explanatory, the Excelsior step, but it is really messy. So what I do is hard reaching around my camera here. I grab a small handful, about like this, this big. Doesn't look like much, but when you kind of fluff it out, it'll get a lot bigger. And you can put your culture there, and then you kind of fluff it out like that. And then you push it into the substrate. There you have it, your finished culture. Plenty of surface area for maggots, plenty of surface area for fruit flies. And now you must be wondering, okay, now that's great and all, but how do I get flies in there? I will grab a already going culture of Heidi Eye fruit flies, and then I just add them like I would feed. And you don't need a ton in there, but you do need a good amount. There's no real science to how many you put in there. I'd say, well, there you go, maybe 100, 60 to 100, I don't know so hard to guess something like that. Now this is one of the most important steps that a lot of people don't know of, but I strongly recommend that you label your cultures with the date and what species of flies are in there. So basically I'll go in here and go 05, and today is the 14th, and then Heidi Eye. I just put H for Heidi Eye. And then you're done. Now you have a set of culture. This culture you see here with the Heidi Eyes will be popping in probably three to four weeks. So it'll have a ton more, which is why it is very, very necessary that you label the top and you'll know when they start to pop. Each culture is good for about five weeks or so. Then you want to start throwing them away because they'll either be dried out, the flies will be malnourished and very, very small. And you also want to label them simply for your records and you should just set a day. Okay, Sunday is the day where I'm going to be making fruit fly cultures, you know? That's what I do. I set a day and I make my cultures all in one day so that way every week you'll have cultures popping. So you can be able to feed a ton of flies to all your frogs to keep them very happy and healthy. Now I would say one culture of flute flies would probably feed of the Heidi Eye. Uh, a popping culture would easily feed five to eight frogs. With a popping culture of the Melanogasters or the uh, Turkish Gliders, you could easily feed 
10 or 15 frogs per culture because those guys reproduce like mad. Now, of course, that's just a general baseline. Don't put that as, you know, notes in your textbook kind of deal where that is fact, that is true. Some frogs will be bigger than others, some will eat more, some won't, you know. It's all very variable. And you can see this one was made about a month ago and it was popping. That's why I'm feeding from it. There you go. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys figured out what my recipe is and now you guys can use it for yourselves. I will put all the information and details in the description down below with all the ingredients and how much I used. So for those of you that are curious and want to start making your own cultures, you can do that. Now I want to thank you guys very much for watching this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked the video, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, then leave them in the comment section. While you're down there, answer the question, what animal you want to see next in May Madness? Now keep in mind, I have done the lychee and I have done the baby Aki. So with that in mind, write that in the comment section down below and subscribe to my channel if you want more of May Madness and more of my videos in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.